A big challenge for any rider out on the trail is always handling spooks. So it's almost inevitable, to, no matter what horse you're riding, how bomb-proof they may be, there's always gonna be something if you do enough trail riding that's gonna scare your horse. So today we're gonna to talk about some general rules that you can use for how to ride spooks and, um, and how to handle different types of spooks. For example, there's the things that we have to work past that aren't moving, like that menacing rock that your horse sees that they just get so worried about. But then there's also the things that um, sometimes we can't control or just move past, like the dog that's running loose and ends up running by, or the bicyclist that doesn't slow down and just tries to whoosh right on by. So we're gonna talk about how to handle those different types of situations as well. I'm Callie, and you're watching the weekly show here at CRK Training, where I share riding ideas, training advice, and horse care information. And today, we're talking about this issue of spooking on trail rides. The first thing to understand is that every single situation is going to be a little bit different. I mentioned in the introduction that, you know, we're kind of roughly thinking about these two different scenarios that we have to work through when we're just going past something spooky and when we're having to deal with something that is moving um, that our horse is scared of. But in reality, every scenario is going to be a little different. And what's going to really make you good, what's going to build your confidence in being able to um, handle these situations that come out on the trail is just getting out there and going through it. The idea is when we can set ourselves up the best we can to build the skills that we need in the arena, and then also to go out on trail rides in first in areas that are gonna be relatively safe, on horses that we know um, are experienced on the trails and are gonna be good, so that we can start to work through these situations with kind of small intensity levels and then build from there. So there's three principles that we talk about anytime there's like a scary stimulus. And this is just as true for when we're thinking about what we're working past or working with out on the trail, but it's also true for ourselves when we think about our safety and our confidence out on trail rides. And these are the principles of distance, duration, and intensity. So if we think about something that the horse is scared of, let's use an example of a barking dog. The closer we get to that barking dog, the more that um, we reduce the distance, the scarier it is basically. So when we can um, work the distance, we can make it easier to work past something. So for example, if there's something scary and you can find a way to just go at a bigger distance around it, can make it easier to get past, we don't necessarily have to go right past everything. We can go give something a little bit more distance help our horses build confidence and slowly work closer as their anxiety, their fear level around that object starts to go down. The other principle is that of duration and that's how long are we exposing ourselves to that scary thing. So this is again true for our horses. Uh, if we think about duration on the trail ride, it might be is the whole trail pretty easy, but there's just like that one place that you have to ride past the, the neighbor's house with the noisy dogs. Or are you riding down a street where there's dogs everywhere and there's motorcycles and there's traffic? And we can think about that as kind of being the duration, the length of time that we're exposed to it. The same goes for us as the rider and thinking about you know, building our confidence on trails. If we can go out someplace where most of it's gonna be easy, but there might just be those few challenging spots that we're gonna to have to work through, it's gonna be better for us in confidence than throwing ourselves right into a situation with a uh, horse that is um, really inexperienced and tends to be really hot and sensitive out on the trails and an environment that there's gonna be a lot to deal with. The third one is the idea of intensity. And I kind of started to actually explain that a little bit even with the, the last one. But intensity is just how, um, like how much of the scary thing, how intense is it? Going back to that barking dog example, three barking dogs is gonna be more intense than one barking dog. And it's kind of the same for ourselves. If we're um, on a horse that's pretty steady, but you know, there's this one place that spooks them a little bit, that's a lower intensity than riding a horse out that is spooking at every, every uh, blowing weed or every little change in the footing as you're riding along. So 
think about any time that you're um, building confidence, if you've ever had some fear out on the trails, it's just important, as important for you to be building your own confidence out there so that you can better help your horse work past the spooky things. So that's the kind of the theoretical part of this. The next piece is how do we actually start to um, work through or work past something scary. So we're gonna start with the easier scenario, which is there's something up ahead that you're gonna to have to ride past and your horse is scared of it. Let's just say it's something that is not gonna cause any real harm. You know that, but your horse doesn't. Maybe it's that rock that just looks menacing. Maybe it's a blowing plastic bag that's caught on the fence, or maybe it's just like a break in the trees that your horse is always a bit skittish about. What I like to do is as I'm asking my horse to move towards that thing, I will I'll ask them to move forward. If they stop and they're staring at it and they're staring in that way where they're, they're very intent and focused on it, you know, their head is up, their ears are perked sharply forward and they're really staring, I just wait there. I look at it with them. I keep my, uh, my breathing very regulated, but I'll just stand there, we'll both look at it, and I wait until the moment where I feel that they start to let down a little bit. So they might take a breath, they might relax, they might actually change focus and start looking at some other things, and then I'll ask them to move a bit closer. Oftentimes, another four or five steps closer then brings them back to that point of, of high alert on the object, where now again, they're focused back in. And the same thing, I'm gonna wait there until I start to get a bit of relaxation at that point, and then we move in a bit closer. So I'm always um, careful not to start pushing my horse and pressuring for a forward when they're already in that really alert, really highly focused on the object state. So I wait until they're starting to let down a little bit. They showed me that they're, they're building some even small amount of comfort at that distance before I ask them to move closer. It takes a while. It doesn't you know, just push past, but it, I find that it's more confidence building for the horse and you're less likely to have the scenario um, of the horse getting more escalated from being scared of whatever the object is at the same time that they're now having to deal with the pressure and then we start to get these conflict behaviors where you might see more jumping to the side, the horse starting to rear, running backwards, and those sorts of things. So that's the scenario again where we're working past something. There are also many times where we have to uh, deal with something that is moving. Maybe it's moving past us or it's just you know moving up ahead and it's not something that we can just simply go past or take our horse up to. It also might not be something that we can go up and have the horse investigate to learn that it's okay. If there's a loose dog and the dog's acting like it might even be a little aggressive, we're obviously not gonna ask our horse to go up to the dog. The skill that becomes really important in these types of situations is understanding how to move your horse's body. And this goes into our skill building in the arena of being able to move, um, ask the horse to move certain legs, be able to maintain bending, be able to ask for lateral movements. Because generally what I wanna do when I have something that, that is moving that my horse is fearful of, is I wanna to try to keep them facing that. And I'm going to keep a bend in their body and I'm gonna keep them moving laterally. So let's take an example of going down a trail and let's say there's a bicyclist that is um, coming the opposite direction. And my horse starts getting really worried, I can tell about this bicyclist. And I can also see that the bicyclist maybe is not likely to stop. So what I'm gonna to try to do is see if I can find enough room that I can um, get off of the trail and that I can keep my horse facing this bicycle as it goes by. So that takes being able to manage my riding aids in a way that I can ask my horse to keep facing that, that I can keep a little bending. If they start to get worried that they wanna move, I can ask them to move off laterally. Horses are um, much more likely to have like bolting and running off in a straight line. They're, you know, they can have big jumps sideways, but they're not nearly as likely to just run off when we can channel that movement sideways. So that's just an, an example. Like I said in the beginning of this video, unfortunately, every situation is gonna be different. Sometimes things are coming from behind. Sometimes things pop up unexpectedly. But the more you can keep building your basic foundational skills in the arena, 
the more that you can have an idea of what you might encounter on the trail and set yourself up where there's gonna be some challenges, but you're very likely to be successful, to be able to work through them and build your skills and your confidence that way, it's going to just set both you and your horse up for success and for happy trail riding. I'd really love to hear your stories. So on this one, I'd love for you to scroll down, leave a comment, and just tell us about one situation where you had something spooky come up and how did you work through it with your horse? If you're watching this video anywhere besides crktrainingblog.com, that's the best place to put your comments. I look forward to seeing you there.